about weathering decals, airbrush weathering, chalk weathering, uh, and probably a couple other things along the way. What I have on the table in front of me is the tools I'm going to use tonight, and I'll go over those real quick. This air compressor and this airbrush I bought as a kit from Harbor Freight for 180 bucks. Give them $15 on top of that, and if it breaks, you can walk into any store and just walk out with a new one. And it's a pretty decent deal. It works pretty good. It's pretty quiet. Badger or Pache? It's a Badger knockoff. And it's just basically, what happens is there's a company in China that makes the airbrush for them, and they just copied a Badger design. So you can replace the needle and the tip with straight Badger parts. And it's uh, basically the same as getting a $132 airbrush for 18 Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, other than that, I have Prismacolor Soft Pastels for the chalk weathering. This box I got at, or got through Dick Blick back when they were still a thing. You can get them off Amazon now. It's about $12 to $15 depending on the shipping for it. It comes with various colors inside. If you're going to get chalks, make sure you get non-wax based or non grease style I guess. Uh, here is a pack of acrylic weathering paints that I also got off Amazon. It was twenty dollars. It came in a box that I threw away as soon as I got it so of course I don't have it. But it's from Model Air by Vallejo. It comes with a variety of different colors in it. They're all water-based. They're already reduced to go through an airbrush. And then we have the decals for the weathering, which I produce through my company, Netsloft Design, and sell through CMR products. <laughs> and I don't spend a whole lot of money on brand-specific dull coat. I got this at Walmart just before we started because I forgot it. It was $4. And a jar from Walther's is like 9 or something. Uh, scale coat for, 6 bucks for 2 ounces. For 2 ounces. This for is, an airbrush. 12 ounces and there's no cleanup of the airbrush necessary and for what you're doing with it it really doesn't make a difference other than that I've got some microset and microsol decal setting solutions if you've worked with decals you're pretty familiar with those I have this little paint palette I picked up at the dollar store for a dollar it's pretty nice and usable we got this cutting mat it's one of the self healing ones and the nice part of this was it was small enough to fit in our toolkit. That was eight dollars at Hobby Lobby. And the big secret to everything, which I have to confess, Sasha is the one that told me this for decaling and chalk weathering, makeup brushes. They work amazingly for pulling the water out, sliding everything around as you need it to. And you can pick up a pack of 20 of them assorted on Amazon for six dollars plus shipping. As long as you don't mind that they're purple. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start with some of the decal weathering. The way this is going to work is the decals like to have a smooth surface to sit on. They work a lot better that way. So, we're going to start decals. We'll take a break while I go out and dull coat it and let that flash off. Then we'll come back into chalk and airbrush weathering. And what we're going to start with here is I have... A brand new Atlas LEF and C boxcar. John can attest I pulled that out of the hobby shop an hour ago. Never opened before. And we'll start right into this. Uh, a lot of this is going to be me doing some work and staring down, and I'm going to try and do it upside down so you can see what's going on. If anybody has questions about what I'm doing or to clarify something that I explained, please just, you know, keep the conversation moving with it. Help me out if you see anybody that's got a question. Well, the point of weathering in general is you want to take the model, which kind of sort of represents factory fresh, and I just noticed there's a wheel popped out of the truck in here, um, and you want to make it look more like it's been on the road for a few years. We're only going to do one side of this car so that we have a nice comparison to do with it. And like I said, we're going to start with the decal weathering. I have here rust spots with streaks on them. <coughs> I'm going to start using these ones. Is that good for you? Okay. And really, I'm just going to select 
what I think is a decent little cluster of them. And cut them out from the paper. I'm going to be one to start with. <clears throat> for regular water slide decals, just room temperature or warm water is all you need for them. Let that start soaking. I'll cut a couple more out so I have some more options to put on. We're not going to be modeling any specific prototype with this. We're just going to have kind of a typically weathered car. <laughs> for the decals, you want them to soak for 15 to 30 seconds, sometimes closer to a minute, depending on what the ambient temperature of the room is, humidity and all that. You want it to the point where you pull it out of the water and just between two fingers with barely any pressure, you should be able to just start to slip the decal itself off of the backing paper. You don't want it to float off completely in the dish. Let's see if I can do this upside down. So I'm going to take the backing paper, hold between my thumb and into our place ranking. pressure on the top of it and slide it off the backing paper and then slide the backing paper out from under it. And there it is on the car that's not in its final location. While it's still somewhat damp, I'll take an X-Acto knife, find out I need more water on it. And just start nudging it into position. Well, Once can you play with the water to keep it hot. You can go back in. As you notice, I put it on there. It was dry. It wouldn't move. Add some water to it. It'll start to refloat. If it starts to set up, uh, go for micro set. Or just the blue pour, one. Or just pour a ton more water on or it. Or just float. keep hitting it with water. That's what um, I was asking. How much? How you got about. You, use water? you can use water until couple you minutes. start to soften it. Once you start to soften the decal to actually set it into place, yeah. the water's done. Okay, you got at least a, a good minute then. Right, yeah. Okay. And I'm just lightly pressing on it to get the water to float or to soak up into the napkin off the decal in the car. And that'll help start to set it. Now, Sasha does it, which is different from how I do it. I'm actually a lot more violent with the decals than what John is when I go to put them on because I just take and wet them, set them on the cutting board, and I take the knife, stick in it, set it where I want, and I stick my finger on the decal and I just slide it off through the knife. And you can do that. The plus side of the decals that we have is they are super resilient. They will take a ton of abuse. For example, today I was putting decals on a bulkhead flat and I hit it with solve set and I noticed there was a crack in the decal so I wet it with more solve set and pushed it back <laughs> into place with my finger you just start ramming it in there you do that with any other decals and you just got a nice big ball of decal yeah try that with a micro scale decal it does not work I've actually done a couple of these in that scale where I had the decal actually fold over top of itself. Yep, and you can able to straighten pick underneath out. there and get it back over. Um, Easy. But... We sell the weathering decals by HO, N scale, O scale, S scale, Z scale. And basically all that means is it's sized sort of what you would expect a lot of times in those specific scales. What I have here is an N scale set. And what I like to use these for on the HO cars is... You'll get a spot where like the forklift ran into the side of the car and put a gouge in it. And you'll have rust streaks down from that. It's just a little bit smaller rust than the HO streaks, which will go on at a point too. A lot of what this is is just kind of 
pulling pieces together and making it look like there's something there. It's like old school pinstriping. There's no real rhyme or reason to a lot of it. You just make it up as you go along. Once you get it on the car, it leaves a little bit of a film. Hit it with the solve set, let it set for a couple seconds. It completely eats that away. Or if you're impatient, once you hit it with the solve set, you can take your knife and just start pulling it away. That too, yeah. Is that that violence thing again? Yeah, it's that all about that violence with the decals. <laughs> well, what our test on the decals was to M -E -K -M. float them through MEK, yeah. And it worked. <laughs> Ate the paper right out from underneath the ink. It was great. And I notice these don't roll up as bad as the uh, first batch. old ones used to. Oh, my. No. And, I, and I had some of the uh, Putman Passenger Works decals and all that huh? were the old paper. The old, old paper. Yeah. I left them in the office, not in the refrigerator, nothing. They don't curl anymore. Mm, of course, you mind that. how warm that office is most of the time. Yeah. Okay, like I said, there's just a little end scale one to represent where something got scraped and it's starting to rust through, which we won't leave that alone by itself. We'll come back through with a little bit of spots around it, kind of help blend it in. And the whole thing of this is the spots are gonna stand out pretty bad for the first bit when you're doing the decal work. After we do a dull coat on it, we'll come back in with some chalk and some airbrushing and just blend everything together. is no longer as sharp as I thought it was. Yeah, uh, same thing right there, and that's 85 bucks right now. Yeah. Everybody rushed to Harbor Street. <laughs> then you get your 20% coupon and you get a cheaper, yeah. <laughs> For a, uh, is that 85 now? Okay. Maybe I was wrong when I said 180. It might have been 120. <laughs> and like I said, you pay the extra 15 or 20 dollars if it ever breaks. Just walk in, get another one off the shelf, and you're good to go. I'm gonna go for some larger streaks. Uh, this is rust that's what we're going to represent with this is going to be coming off the roof and again I'm being just real wide with my cuts on it Another thing these streaks are great for is um, if you turn them sideways, you can get some door rust on there. The doors to boxcars seem to get beaten up like nobody's business. Uh, a lot of times they'll wind up someplace where the shipper or the receiver will just have a minimum wage employee on the dock with a forklift that decides the best way to open the car is to ram it multiple times. You mean you're not supposed to use the forklift fork to open the door? I mean, <laughs> it happens a lot, so. Man, that's where I went wrong. The weathering decals, we don't print white behind them, typically. So they tend to go over lighter colored cars. As you can see where I put it on over the logo, it kind of disappeared over the black. But that's all stuff that can be worked on using the chalk and the regular paints. A lot of what you want to do with this just involves layering. 
putting multiple pieces on top of each other to get a different depth to it, different shapes and whatnot. Like here on this one, I didn't quite make it to the edge of the door because it's wider than I thought it would be. So I'm going to take another one, line it up on the edge of the door just to get some more coverage with it. And then we're down to that abuse the decals thing here because it's just not quite sitting the way I wanted it to. I just want to get a little bit more on the door and probably a little bit more on the streaking side over here. Like I said, I'm not, there's no rhyme or reason to it other than just kind of the way things rust. Gravity has their effect on various things. Which, with, with the decals, you don't have to pay attention to too much. You just kind of have to make sure your streaks are pointed in a direction that works for it. Uh, when we get into the chalk in the airbrushing, we'll talk a little bit more about the way rust settles and the way the elements have an effect on stuff. I just want to get a couple more things on here before I go to clear coat it. Also, I'm hoping the clear coat works because clear coating right after doing decals, I don't recommend that. What I normally recommend is about 12 to 24 hours worth of set time before attempting to dull coat or clear coat over the decals. I'm not sitting here that long. No, and I don't, yeah, we're going <laughs> to, as soon as I get some more on here, we're going to go ahead real quick. I'm going to take a break for you and scoot outside and spray some dull coat on it and hope that it works. <laughs> now what we have here, <clears throat> this one bubbled up on me. I'll talk about these real quick. Um, and I just grabbed a regular makeup brush. I have no idea anything about these because I don't normally use them for anything other than this. It's kind of got a chisel shape. <laughs> it's got a chisel shape to it. Beyond that, I'm not really sure. Just dampen it and kind of use it to work the decal down into the spots there. <laughs> so how long do you wait before you start doll coating, Brian? <laughs> minutes. <laughs> okay, so we should be all right. But of course, I don't use Microsoft and Microset. I use the really aggressive stuff. Which oh, is? Yes. Walther's. The I stuff use, that's wrapped in a bag for a reason. Yes. I use the very harsh decal setting solution. Do you just use Walther's or what else do you use? Walther's Champ. All Straight really Xylene. Stuff. Filter stuff. The stuff that has the carcinogens and everything else in it. Yeah, that stuff. Oh, the stuff that's illegal in California. Yes. Yep. yep. Excellent. Charlie, you got all them brushes down the house. Guess where it's still legal? I'm going to read your obituary okay. paper, too. Very mm -hmm. much. <laughs> Does that just make sense? There are two different scents to them because there's totally different chemicals in them. The Walter Solva set, by far, is. One of the most aggressive ones out there since Champ and Hobart. But when you got to get something to really settle in over some hard to get in there stuff, oh, there's nothing like it. That's yeah. In the Walter stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've actually tried to pour it on the model first and then try to push the decals into it. And they still, that's still provided out there. Yeah, Walter's is. Champ's obviously not because Champ is not. Business. Now, I will say, if you get too carried away with the Solva set from Walters, you're going to have a funky spot in the paint on the model. And it's not just a little one either, because it'll just start to spread if it gets underneath the paint. All right, now explain that little uh, cutter tool you have. This is a thing. Wilson told us about these. It's one of the best things ever. The swivel knife. show it to the camera. Mm -hmm. It is a swivel-tipped 
Exacto. They use that for silk screening. Yes, and it is beautiful for cutting out around decals, making nice sharp corners, almost like a pinstripe. I keep going back to pinstriping. Um, but with like the Mac style brushes, when you go into the corners, you twist them to help get the ferrules around it. It's the same deal with the br or the uh, knife. You give it a little twist, it just follows right along with you. Beautiful. Not great for long straight cuts, but for going around corners and intricate little swirls and whatnot, there's nothing like it. Where would you find something like that, Wilson? They got that one there at Hobby Lobby. I got mine <coughs> from the, that one dealer over at the Kirtland Show here. And they're also available from Exacto. <laughs> they just they're harder to find, though. There's two or three different manufacturers that make them, and I believe the blades, I'm not positive, but I think the blades might all interchange. They're all set up about the same. Exacto the company we got... Plastic back. Yeah. The company we got the uh, knife from is not the same company we got the replacement blades from, but they do work together. So it sounds like it's kind of standardized. Yeah. They do take a little bit of getting used to, but once you get used to them, they are very easy to use. But you buy lots of blades because when you're cutting out decals and stuff, you will dull those blades really quick. And it is somewhat hard to find the blades. Mm -hmm. And once the point goes on it, yep. it's chunk. Toss thing you got to remember. With an exacto blade, you're holding that thing at an angle. Yep. Those there, straight up and down. You don't hold them on an angle. It's like when you're writing with a pencil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you want it to go, you just, you don't really have to put pressure with it either. It's just trying to go with it. It was put to me, they're sharp as a scalpel. Some people do use scalpels for doing decal work as well, since you said that. I don't personally like them. Yes, they're sharper, yes, they're harder, and they hold their sharpness longer. But they've got a very wide blade that comes up to a real quick curve to it, and I just don't like that so much as I like the chisel shape of the Exacto blades. It seems like when you're working with a scalpel, the blade gets in the way of what you're trying to see. And I'm just absolutely tearing apart these these streaks. You don't have to use them as the full long ones. Like right here, I'm just going to use a little bit for the bottom of the door. Get some rust into that, just some definition. And like I said, we will touch this all up with some brush work and some chalk work to kind of blend everything together. But having a nice base to it is makes it so much easier later on. So when do you start using your, your solutions? Well... Looking at the center of the door here, we've got quite a lot of bubbling and it's not quite settled down in. I could hit that at any time. I'm just going to kind of wait till the end of getting all the decals on and hit it all at once. Why? Well, no reason really. What about you, Brian? When you, how often do you use your solution? All the freaking time? All the time. You float it <laughs> off in Microsoft? No, that does not work. It eats it up. And uh, I usually, once I get one little section done, I'll hit it so I can move on to the next one. And then I'll, when I get that done, I'll, for example, the cars that I was doing today, there's three decals on the side of the car. Lay the first one on. As you can see how I'm holding the paper towel, I just take it and I literally just rub the water right out of the decal. I am very impatient when it comes to this stuff. And I'll pull all the water <coughs> out of it, hit it with solve a set, move on to the next section. And I'll just keep going through the whole car. Where this all started from 
is before we actually had somebody printing our decals, I had to go back through and layer another decal on top of it for other projects. I am not waiting three days to do a whole car. So I had to come up with a faster way of doing it. So I put it on, solve a set it and keep going. So I could come back through and start laying the second and third row of decals on top of them. To be fair, you also were used to decaling in the back of a moving van. <laughs> no, no, it was a Cavalier, please. Okay. <laughs> and that was an interesting trip. Were you doing striping? Yes, I was doing roof striping on Ooh, yeah. Catalana's OCS cars. Here, hold on. Like I, like I said, I just go through, and I'm using my finger in the paper towel just to work it in. You got something on there already? No, not the solve set. I'm just working the air out of your decals. Yeah, we would have gotten there. Remember, it's a team effort. Yeah. See, Brian does this stuff all quick and whatnot. I like to just, you know, take an evening, sit down, and enjoy myself. It's the difference between whenever I have to get it out the door for somebody and it's somebody just printing decals for me. True. It's the difference between production work and enjoying a hobby. There's an enjoyment so far, to this I'm hobby? Yes, both. there's enjoyment to this hobby. Man, am I doing this wrong then? <laughs> <laughs> you may be. Gosh, you were violent. I told you I'm pretty violent with these decals. Uh, I was talking about you breaking the plastic behind No, it. I broke the paper towel, not the plastic. <laughs> See, then I'll even take and I'll try to smooth them out. I need the car back. I don't Sorry. think both the, the red water. shirts are brothers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the one recording it and the one act the one in the red shirt, yeah. Well, the two bright red shirts. <laughs> the one they can't see? Yes. Yes, the one they can't see. The ones that's probably sound exactly the same on video? Yeah, that's... <laughs> And that is worth noting. If you can't see or anything, please, you know, let me know and I'll show you something here. If you want to go back over any of the stuff we talked about, this will be available online. Eric, when will this be available online? Friday. Monday. 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 We also got to put up the other car video, too. You got to pick that up tomorrow. <laughs> This is my excited face. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, our videos are entertaining to watch. Watch, maybe. Listen to, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's uh, kind of where we're going to stop with doing stuff on the side of it. For right now. Yes, I know. I'm getting one for the camera. This as a roof rust pack. It is mostly, uh, for most 50-ish foot box cars, you've got enough to do the car. It's sized to be the right width. It's sized to be close to the right length. A little bit longer. Yeah. I would not recommend just floating this in a bucket of water and pulling it off straight onto the car, although you could if you wanted to. I what think, I've done... I think that's a challenge. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> The you challenge has been set. You can do it in end scale. No, that's too easy. Well, I <laughs> usually scale. break it up into various there pieces. Gee. I have some other scale cards. Even at that, they're kind of large. <laughs> Get those scale to choose vinyl graphics. Hey. <laughs> Just run it through the printer. Guys. Yeah, really. Either way. You'll have this occasionally with decals. I want to curl up on you. Just hold them down. Drown them. Hold them down until they quit moving. When the bubbles stop. Some mafia portion of the show. Hold them down until they stop moving. Hey, it worked. <laughs> now, see, John, John, again, releases his decals differently than I do. I just take the decal, dip it, flip it, set it. And I'll leave it Which sit there. Which we can there. do, yeah. And whenever I'm ready for it, I'll pull it off. I don't have to worry about it floating off in the water. Floating off is a bit of a problem because then you kind of have to chase it around and hope you can catch it. And with our original decals, it was a real pain because when they floated off in the water, they rolled up into a fruit roll-up. <laughs> yeah, and then that you take is, that they decal were and you throw it away and they, start over. You could unroll them. It was just a royal pain. Yeah. Did that a couple times with N-scale graffiti decals. That was 
painful. Mm. Yeah, but they're graffiti decals. Just put them on there, half rolled up. I did. Didn't you, got you notice? Caught by the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't finish. Dang. And this one's a little bit long on this side, so I'll wind up trimming that off once it's kind of settled in there. And you can see the real little bit. We'll just keep on rolling with that. Putting them face down sometimes helps prevent them from curling up out of the water. <laughs> you, you know, the sad part is I'd probably be done with the roof. <laughs> yeah, he would have did one single decal. Yep, so I would have slid the whole decal on yeah, the roof I'm and sure. called it quit. <laughs> like I said, I am very impatient because I just have 50 other projects that I got to get done. And Now this one's going to be somewhat larger. What I like to do for the larger ones is either pre-put down some water or microset. Depending on what we're using, I'm just going to use water because, again, I'm hoping I can go ahead and spray this soon. Anytime I use microset, it seems to get gooey. You'll have some stick up. That's fine. You come back in with your brush and you just kind of work it back down to where it needs to be. It's, you know, rust and weathering. It's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Well, that's exactly, yeah. Telling you it won't be gooey. I know. It only takes a couple minutes. I know. A lot of this you're putting on it dries real quick. This is micro saw. It is Microscale's version of Solvacet. It's not quite as aggressive as the Walther's brand. That's actually just the softening solution. Right. What it'll do is essentially eat the decal film. Oh, okay. So it makes it look actually real. Yeah, it softens up the decal film so it either dissipates or works its way in. If you don't do that, essentially, you wind up with what's called silvering where the clear unprinted decal film shines out, shines out around the edge of... Doesn't look so realistic. Right, right. And there, okay. there's other ways to make the decal film disappear. I'm a huge person for using high gloss first. I'll spray the model down with high gloss, throw the decals on it, solve a set it, and then I'll hit it with dull coat and you don't see anything. Which we should... You really do want a decal on gloss surfaces anyway. For the most part, as it comes out of the box, isn't bad, though. No, everything's about satin coat now. True. And okay, yet, if the way things used to come. Yeah. Now, the other reason why you want to do it on a nice high-gloss surface is the decal slides far better yes. than what it does on a satin or dull surface. Now, I'm not saying that I have never decaled on dull-coated items, because I have. And it takes a lot more effort to hide the decal. You gotta cut closer to the printing, you gotta do a lot of extra work that's not necessary. Which I didn't do any of that on this. No, but again, we're going you're quick working on, on a semi-gloss model. True. Yeah, I guess this is a somewhat older release. This is. <clears throat> oh. 
right now I'm just using the brush to go down with the uh, shape of the roof ribs to work the water and air out from under the decal as much as possible. There's probably a little bit of salt to set left in it at this point. Once you put the Solvacet, whether it's Microsol or the caustic stuff, to the car, you don't want to mess with the decal too much because it does weaken up the film. I know you beat it all around, that's fine. <laughs> and if you're going to use a paper towel to help smash it down into the details, um, the damp corner of it is probably the best because otherwise it will stick to the napkin. I know, I know. Do not use Viva towels, though. I will tell you that. Yeah, and shop towels are not a good one to use either. Because they will pull the decal right off the model, yeah. and you don't get it out. Hard way, trust me. What kind, what kind of towel would you say not to use? Viva or shop towels. The big they're blue the same, They're the same yeah. consistency. That's, Those are okay. Yeah. Just nothing with that super fine cloth texture to it. Paper, real paper. Towels. Real paper towels is preferred. Or McDonald's napkins are pretty good. <laughs> Again, there. Sheet napkins towelers. are real good too. Sheet napkins are wonderful. Of course, I do ask you all you. Q-tips work. Um, okay, now I've got. I'm going to show the camera first here. There's a little bit of water and air trapped under the decal film right in this corner. <laughs> right here, I've got a little bit of a bubble. So I'm going to take the sharp knife, just poke into the middle of the corner where you won't see the hole. And using the brush, work the air and the liquid out through the hole. See how that settled back in? Yeah. Okay. That's just kind of... Seriously though, these makeup brushes are great for this and they are dirt cheap. Even better. <laughs> yeah, if you got it. I'm not advocating raiding like your wife or your girlfriend's drawer for these just to get them for free, but I just seen a bunch of them down with my own wife. Exactly. <laughs> It's not difficult at all, especially with the decals. Yeah, and it's really, well, like I said, once we, we'll break here so I can clear coat this, we'll talk some more about that, but. Well, it's just like the shininess that he was talking about, I couldn't get it out, and I'm like, yeah, it looks not realistic. <laughs> I haven't used real rust. They do make uh, sophisticated finishes, I think used to be what it's called, and I don't know if that's the new name of the company or not. They sell a product, it's a two-part system, where you get one jar Legitimate rust. of paint that has iron flex in it, and then you get another jar of some kind of oxidizing enhancer. I just scraped it off my old car. Well, that works too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of coating over with uh, Solvacet now to help work everything into it. Go back over and check the roof. And you're still going to use like the chalks and yep. airbrushing on it? Yep, yep. Once, I, uh, once this kind of flashes off, I'm going to spray it down. Not really. I'm pretty quick at it. So, <clears throat> Again, I don't waste a whole lot of money on brand specific testers dull coat this is four dollars from walmart it works yeah, great you just want to do chalk weathering as it is when you get it out of the box spray it down with dull coat or matte clear or something it gives it a little bit of a textury bite to it so the chalk has something more to stick to straight raw plastic it doesn't like to stick to it very well <laughs> That's <what I> mean. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, I can go home now and learn something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And the one thing I have tended to do when I use the, the chalks is once I get them on the car, I do not flat coat it. Once I yep. work it in, I don't coat it. <coughs> if you do, a lot of times it'll disappear on you. So it'll it'll be there, but you won't be able to see it. It'll definitely lighten it up. Yeah. So when you coat it? Yeah. Okay. Which as long as you're not fingering your rolling stock all the time, it's not a huge deal. But I mean if you want to get into like the pan pastels, yeah. you can put that I don't care if that thing's gloss, you put that on there. Once you rub that in there, you can take your finger and I, I mean, you can use your fingernail and you can't get that stuff off. I mean, it just sticks right to it. It's like that glue in it or something. I always keep one brush for dry and one brush for application. Mm. One brush for dry, one Well, yeah. See, that's with the pack that comes with this mascara brush. I'm not really sure what we can use that for yet, but give me some time and I'll figure out something on here. black. Just take an old cheap X-Acto and scrape it off into a little powdered pile. I like doing this over newspaper because you can collect what falls off and keep using it. Not that this stuff's terribly expensive, but why waste? How did you guys start this? Okay, and I'm just going to stipple in a little bit of the dark, a little bit of the lighter on my brush. I'm going to start in on the model. Basically what I'm looking to do here is help blend all the decals that were on this together. So I probably want to do a little bit on the door. Which what I'm doing first is just adding for coverage. I'm not looking to get any kind of specific shape or anything out of it yet. I'm just adding a little bit on and then I'll go back in and start pushing it around some. If you don't want too much on there, just tap it off. But when you put it on, do you like rub it in the model? What I'm doing is I'll stipple it into the brush. And then I'll just kind of stipple it on to where it needs to be, just to get some coverage in there. Okay. And then I'll come through and do a little bit of a streak with it. Okay. <coughs> but does it usually stick on? More or less, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's... If I were to wipe it, it would probably come off. But what I'm... So it's like what you said before, if you don't touch a rolling stock very much. And like... Right. And then we are going to seal this over, so I'm going to go pretty heavy with it. So that when we seal it, it lightens and that's what up. That uh, stuff you got at Walmart for, right? Yep. Just to seal it. Okay. Yep. And I'll stipple in a little bit just to get some color on. Looks pretty good. Like I said, what, basically what we're doing here is blending in the decals. Now I've got this one that's mostly clean, as in I didn't use it today yet. And I'll use that to help brush some back out of the center where we might not want it. help blend in the roof line here. <laughs> I like those rust decals. Oh, they're great. Yeah, they're really good. Instead of actually making the rust yourself. Mm -hmm. But that's the challenge of the of it all. Yeah. He just makes it look easy. <laughs> it's really not that hard. Um, 
I didn't really do a whole lot of rust weathering until about two years ago when I decided to try it. Yeah, that's all you can really do, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Get in and do what you can. Best thing to do is just get a, just go buy a cheap car. Yep. <laughs> you know, find one on a show for a couple bucks and, you know, roll in that, learn everything on that, and then, you know, I mean, because the thing is, is once you get that to a point, yeah. Throw the thing in alcohol, take it all off, and everything like that, paint it again, and start all over. Once you learn, you know what you want to do, the with technique, it, yeah. then use it on your on your better cars. We're sending away for a professional too. I do offer this as a service through CMR Products. You actually do it? Yes. Sweet. We also do direct printed weathering which is essentially the same as what the decal weathering is, only the car goes into the printer and we print the weathering to it. Oh yeah, we bought a big printer. So. <laughs> you guys got the best, best of everything. Yeah, basically you can do like the whole side of the car in one shot. Weathering, graffiti, whatever. <laughs> I'm just putting a little bit of rust down here on the undercarriage where you run into it more than anything. That's what I'm saying, it like, takes the fun out of it. <laughs> It's all what you want to do. So you can get the stuff to do it yourself. Well, it all matters with time frame, stuff like that, too. Oh, absolutely. When you got kids, you don't have very much time. Yeah. I Once understand. I have a base in there, I like to pull it up just a bit to yeah, take a, fade it in. I'll some. take an evening. I know I'm going to have a couple hours, and I'll pull out six cards. I'll just sit there and I'll do all six of them at one time. See, right now, I'm starting out. I only have one engine. I had like a whole rolling stock of engine stuff, but I sold them all off because I had to provide for my family and stuff. <laughs> You're about 74 or 5 behind me. 74 or 5. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You get a little bit of the rust in there. Mixed color. And I'm going to exaggerate this for showing. Press into the side of the brush. What's your favorite? Uh, then come back in where you got your streaks here. Like Kato, Atlas, your favorite? I prefer Kato, but you get older style locomotives in Kato. Get a little bit of color I mean, differentiation into there. You know, I like, like, I like the Jeep 7s and 9s. And 30s oh, you like the SDs? The, yeah. Like the old Jeep and the yeah. SDs? Okay. Um, I mean, I've got some of the newer stuff I run at the mall for the Christmas show. Like I said, we will make this a little bit darker. Because okay. once you uh, spray it again, It'll wind up lightening up some. some steam. Uh, oh, you always gotta have some steam on it. Did they have all the wheels on them, Brian? On it didn't. This one was oh. in the package. <laughs> the, the layout I have was. I got Just e probably why this is the one that we're using. Can do some real tight curves. Uh, they will go around them, but. <coughs> See, I noticed that fish. All right. They have some up here on the roof, we'll come in. That are really hard to find. Yeah. I usually just do one pass on everything to kind of knock down some of the shine from the silver. And just to get a little bit of texture to some of the decals. <coughs> so you can tell where Brian held it when he was spraying it. <coughs> Which isn't a big deal, we can cover that up. That's what happens when you kind of get your finger grease into it. Because the chalk will really stick to that point. Yes. <coughs> But this one lives on land. The turtles live in the water. And that's why you recommend using gloves. That's, like I said, I'm not afraid of the chalk. I'm not afraid of any of the paint in here, but the oils from your skin will make a mark. But sometimes during the warmer times, he eats a lot more. So he's probably so you're not protecting yourself, you're protecting the mark. Right. We got him many years ago, and he hit a little crack mark. He'll tap on the glass, he'll just think it's another turtle. And Brian buys the gloves and bolt. And we'll go through. You know where I got these, actually. I don't know. <laughs> At the top, I'm just going to drag straight down. Which that's a lot on there, I know. But. Adam, I know. 
works pretty well. Blow the excess off. You just want a little bit on. Nothing too major. And like I said, you can take your clean brush. And if you want to clean it, the underside of the ribs, the rust tends to settle on the top of them. Something else I've seen, and I've heard it called rail, I think rail jazz or something, mm -hmm. right above the wheels, you get a yep. stripe that comes up, correct? Yeah, from the, the mud. mud I usually do that yeah. with the airbrush, though. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> okay. You could do it with the powder, I suppose. It'd probably be more off. of a dirty powder, but. Yeah. Do a whole nother session just on doing the trucks. Maybe oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna. Yeah. I'm not even gonna probably yeah, do much. Trucks and wheels are a pain to fucking do, especially in end scale. I do the Jim Six method, which I can't remember the specifics of it off the top of my head because I haven't done it in a while. But it's available online. Jim Six. I think Jim Six. He's got a real good tutorial on doing it. Minuteman has wheel holders. Those are amazing for painting. That you can you actually <laughs> place the car, the wheel inside, so it blocks the flanges. Yeah, it's basically a you just sand bl or blast yeah, it off. Yeah, I think they have them. What they you put like six or seven wheels that's in there. In N scale, you can get it. I think it's like either six or eight. Yeah. HI, I think is only four. Okay, and that's what I'm going to call good for the uh, for the powder. We picked up a set of those for the business, so we have access to them now. Good. Mm -hmm. Now for airbrushing, I'll leave that out there while I discuss this. It's gonna run closer to like 30 with your shipping into it, but it's all acrylic, and it's all in these little squirter bottles, and they're already pre-thinned out for airbrushing, so you don't have to do anything except shake it and squirt it into your airbrush. Um, I honestly. Do not use acrylic for painting. Anytime we do painting, we use Scale Coat 2, which is my preferred paint. But when I do airbrushing, I prefer acrylic. It's easier to clean up, it's easier to work with in that regard. Once again, this is a Harbor Freight airbrush and compressor. What's the price on one of those usually? Uh, I just looked it up. What was it? 85 about $85, $85 on, sale. And on sale with the, the airbrush. That's everything. That's everything? That's everything. That's, everything. Everything. That's really good. Yep. Yeah, they're on sale right now. They're you grab your coupons from, from Harbor Freight. You're good. Well, with this stuff, the big thing that you got to remember, this is rust. This is rust with metallic in it. And uh, glittery rust doesn't really look good. So. <laughs> oh, it says metallic on it. Yeah. Okay. So I usually just start with a little bit of rust. I said it's pre thin for airbrush. Throw some of that in there. Take a look at it. Sure, that'll work. Straight from the bottle. Straight from the bottle. Now, and that's with this product. I can't guarantee that any other paint will be pre-thinned for airbrush use. Well, it says there. Great. Now, this is a dual action airbrush in that you press down once to activate the air and you pull back the trigger to activate your paint. Find airbrush instructions online. You can Google it. Yeah. Okay. Nope, not YouTube. I, I just want a real nice light. See how much paint I'm not? adding just a little fine amount so we're about a third to half on the trigger just a little bit of a miss to get some color onto the top of the ribs get some to settle on the top now, just because I got a little bit of rust that I did down here, I'm going to come in. Just add a little bit more color to it. 
This will also help seal the chalk in. I'll add just a little bit to the truck side frame since we're in here. And a little bit on the underframe to knock down some of the shine on the brake details. Which most of the time you won't see the underframe, but you'll catch a little bit coming out the side. <laughs> Onto the roof. And I'm going to go way less on this one. I'm not even going to be maybe a quarter trigger. The trigger tells you how much you're going to actually be spraying? Yes. Uh, like I said, dual action. Pressing down triggers yeah. your air, pulling back triggers the amount of paint. How far you pull it is going to be the amount of paint going yep, through. Yep, yep. The, more, the okay. farther back you pull it, the more it pulls the needle out and lets more paint through. Okay. And I'm going to be somewhat close because I want a tight line on it. A little bit to help blend the rust decals in here. And Brian's fingerprint. in the door just a little bit and work this in. Again, very little on the trigger. And then like Al mentioned, you'll get wheel spray. From the cars that run with it so again i'm going to be about 25 percent on the trigger and i'm going to be real tight on the model just to get it nice and narrow which those might be a little bit too far apart but yeah. Of course, you always do this in a paint room, right? Oh, of course, yes, with proper air protection, you know, yeah. breathing protection and all that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then just a little bit more of what I'm going to wind up doing here is very light to help blend the edges in a little bit more. All right. There we have a weathered car. Show the unweathered side. This is the mostly original side. There we go.